sinners to sweet wise religion Creed's been crowned a new king Hollywood dream teams Yesterday's trash queens Save the blessings for the final ring Baby! Take a ride on the wild Hello there, Poison Rock fans. Today we got another interview for you. We are Ada and Eric, and today with us is the singer of Pestilence, Patrick Mamelli. So, Patrick, thank you for being with us. Pleased to meet you. First question. Pestilence and you, Patrick, are pillars and legends in the death metal scene. But as you know, there are always new fans. So maybe for them, could you just give a brief introduction about Pestilence, what you were all about. Uh, wow. Um, I, I don't know if you got plenty of time, but uh, I try to, be, <laughs> try to be as short as possible. Um, we started back in 86 uh, when the first uh, wave of death metal uh, was born, um, you know, with, with bands like Death and Morbid Angel, you know, and DSI, when these bands are all starting, we, we started um, as their counterpart in Europe. Yes. Uh, so we got signed to uh, to Roadrunner Records, which are no longer. Um, uh, they kind of uh, disappeared, but um, uh, that was one of the hugest um, labels back then. And we were the first Dutch band uh, ever to be uh, signed uh, by them. And so uh, we were able to um, record Malay's Malificarum, which a lot of people uh, think it's, uh, it's one of the best thrash albums uh, out there. From you know, from the beginning, um, you know, we were growing, we were growing up as sixteen-year-olds, seventeen-year-olds, and uh, trying to exploit the world of death metal, uh, which not did did not have the name death metal at, at that time. You know, uh, yeah. like Jeff Becerra came up with that name back in the days. Uh, so, and we learned about those bands uh, through tape trading. Um, yeah. We got a chance to record, um, you know, for for uh, for Road Runner. And uh, the rest is history. We um, we're about to record our ninth album now, so uh, we've been here for thirty plus years. Oh my god, it's amazing! <laughs> That's so amazing. You started your career as a um, thrash metal influence, death metal influence, and but your change, your sound changes in brutal death metal. And uh, back then, how was that death metal scene in? Um, in, in in Europe, in Netherlands, and it was different from Florida or Sweden? Well, um, I'm never a person to adapt to any scene at all, so I, I, I'm not quite, uh, I don't quite know what a scene looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, back in the days, um, um, people came together, you know, at parties or at, at people's houses and they listened to metal music. That, that, was, that was the scene back then, you know. That there were there was not a, not like, um, like groups, hordes of people listening to metal. Uh, there, there was just like a select um, um, few minorities that were listening to that music yeah. in the place. And um, back then, it felt way more like a family. Whereas now, um, you can listen to brutal slam or uh, death metal and and look completely different. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so it's because of the internet now. It's where um, there is a different kind of um, belonging uh, to a group. I mean, you can have friendship with people all over the place and never, never meet them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So back then, it was just a few friends, and then um, when you go to a different city to do a show, for example, uh, a lot of a lot of the times it was not like um, they embrace you. It's more like jealousy, and they hate you because they want to. They wanted to be the best death metal band or something like this, you know? Yeah. So it's it's the same in Italy. People from from Verona, for example, yeah. don't like the people in uh, they don't like the in Napoli, Italy. right? <laughs> or they don't like the people in, in Sardinia because they're different, you know. And it, this is the same with music. It's like it should be something that is uh, embracing and uh, be a big family thing. But yeah, uh, 
you couldn't speak of a scene back then. It was just like sporadically there are some people and you can you can recognize them. They have leather jackets on and long hair. That's it. Yes. Now you don't recognize them anymore. Only the old guys you recognize, they still look the same. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. <not, laughs> yeah, true. So, uh, you already spoke about Maleus Maleficarum as your debut album. Also, we know that basically it's the instruction book of the Holy Inquisition. It's that damn book. Was that um, historical background the entire influence for the songwriting? Was there something else? Could you just tell us a bit about this early album of yours? Okay, well, um, I can only speak about uh, the, the musical part about it because the texts were written by, uh, by Marco Fodes mostly. Okay. And, uh, and I think um, the the you know the lyrics um, they have to fit the music, sure. uh, and 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 the, the the image you want to portray in your music. Uh, and we figured we we didn't want to be a band like um, like for example um, Cannibal Corpse uh, or, or Deicide that spoke about Satanism and Satan and, and stuff yes. like that. You know, uh, we always try to be a little bit different. Uh, uh, with our with our musical taste and also uh, uh, about our lyrical views, and I think that um, Malays Maleficarum about you know that's it, 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 it's the book of the you know the Holy Inquisition. This is stuff that really happened back in the past, so that's why we uh, took knowledge of it and we we looked it up, we studied it, and that's why we used it for our first album. Yes. So was the music there before you actually chose that historical background? Uh, the music is always there first. Yes. Uh, I mean, this is back in the days where I was not so, um, how can you call it? I was not talented enough and uh, using my brain enough to comprehend uh, what you can reach with music and, the, you know, to, to use your full potential. It was more like a 16, 17 year old kid trying to make music. Yes. And while while there were other bands um, exploding, uh, like Creator, uh, yes. um, you know, Infernal Majesty, all these bands that were coming out, and and we're trying to to be as good as they are, they were to be like the you know the Dutch answer to to all these guys that were trying to do the same as we were doing. Yes. So, I, I, and I see you know that there that, that there were uh, bands um, talking about um, social stuff social economic stuff but like like yeah. like more in the thrashy way you know uh like creator did um mm -hmm. and and then there was bands that were talking more about like um the morbid side like morbid angel talking about satanism at some point um and then you have uh, you know other bands like cannibal they they have only gore lyrics yes and, and absurd <laughs> lyrics and uh you know i i i i told marco and i told martin uh, that we need to back down from these statements uh, and try to do your own um, um, your own themes and other stuff that you know you know to, to, to try you know to be as original as possible yes. because at that time there were so many bands singing about the same stuff and and now I'm happy that I didn't do that because I'm 52 and, and I, I I don't want to talk about fucking a zombie or something like that which yes. is just, <laughs> just ridiculous right yeah or, I yeah. mean you're your career, your songs was covered by by many bands, like for example, Suicidal Angel, that we are going to interview soon. They covered one of your songs. You have been inspiration for all of that 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 trash metal band. So I think you succeeded on it. So that's great. It was the right thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the, the the funny thing is when when you say stuff like that, and I hear it all the time in interviews that a lot of bands got influenced by Pestilence. And um, uh, then, then I always wonder why isn't Pestilence as successful as some of these bands out there that have been there as long as Pestilence has? I mean, it really, I think it has to do with the fact that the fans um, expect something from a band, and then they want to keep that expectation in the same direction going. Mm. You know, and Pestilence always has been trying to evolve and trying to become better yeah. musicians, try to just evolve and, and, and not copy themselves. So yes. So I, I guess that's the main reason I'm answering my own question, I guess. You know? <laughs> yes, yeah. because the yes. next one will be something like that. Because yeah. in every 
in every album you're like evolving your style, you're changing your style. We see brutal that core. Also, you also use ex more something more experimental like jazz fusion, synth guitar. I mean, this is amazing. And what what caused you to what brings you to do that? And what what is the what were the what was the reaction of the fans? Well, the the reaction. I, I guess you're um, you're kind of uh, steering towards spheres. Uh, yeah. That was the first introduction of um, for us for synth guitars, and not the way Cynic did it, but uh, just like you know, more more prominent there. Not just like okay. just adding, but just prominent there. And um, it's just because of the guys from Cynic. Actually, we started listening to guys like Pat Metheny, and. Um, and, and, and Tree Lock Gurtu and getting into Alan Holdsworth a lot where uh, Alan Holdsworth has been using the, the, the guitar synth like a syntax, they call it. And uh, I, I was amazed by, by this instrument and I, and I felt that it could, it could be a nice combination with, uh, with, the bu with the brutal music that we were making. Boy, was I wrong. You know, I don't think that the, I don't think that the, that the, the purity of metal, right? The purity of metal um, is has boundaries. So as, as 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 soon as you step out of that boundary, it's not called metal anymore, or you will lose a lot of fans inside the metal scene. So we lost a lot of we lost a lot of fans with uh, creating this album, and we also lost um, our record company, uh, which we which we actually really wanted because at that point, Roadrunner was not as supportive of us anymore and we needed uh, a, a, a ticket to get out so yeah. we made uh, spheres and you know at that point not a lot of people like spheres uh, so the record company dropped us so I, I felt free again because the the worst thing you can do to a musician is to limit the musician um, yeah. by con by contract yes so if you, you have a bad thing, you can't get out of that contract um, your creativ creativity dies. So yes, for a yes. lot of time, I was I was depressed, and I I just quit playing music for almost twenty years. Yes, I think for many bands there is this one album where the record company wants to tell them what to do, and then it turns out something that is entirely different than what they did before or did after that. So mm -hmm. would you say that beside the synths, what was there? Any other big difference to Malleus Maleficarum that really sticks out? Well, um, I think uh, even the, the upgrade from Malleus uh, would be uh, uh, consuming impulse because for, for some of those people uh, out there, uh, that's the holy grail. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And also maybe because Martin um, sang on that album as well because he had a very brutal el uh, 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 voice on that album. Mm -hmm. um, and then came testimony, and that was uh, again a little bit different, but still very brutal. And I think that Pestilence may be one of the first bands to create melodical death metal. Yes, to have, like to use um, choirs and and violins and and other kinds of stuff. Um, but but mainly um, for me is to when I create music is not to listen to metal. Okay. If you if you do listen to metal, um, be, being like me, I abs I absorb a lot of information, um, uh, musical information. So if I listen too much suffocation, my wrist will sound like suffocation, and I don't want to yes. do that, right? Yes. So I don't listen to I don't listen to metal at all, and I try to focus on on, on good musicians, and good musicianship mostly is found in jazz. So jazz and fusion, I mean, just come on, look at the drummers there. The drummers are really just Absolutely. something. Absolutely, yes. Yes. And yes. what triggered uh, uh, Sean, Sean Reinert, you know, God bless him. This is what triggered Sean Reinert into, you know, creating uh, the drums for human. Yeah. Which became a standard. It's because he listens to jazz drummers, what gave him that style to to and then metalizes it into something molded into something else and yeah. that was like um that was a, a good, you know that was a golden goal so um people accepted that and from there on uh the game changed you know uh and i think now um it changed for the worse because now you have these bands out there that try to blast beat like 
300 BPM. Yeah. But they use they use technology to fake it. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. So so there's just a few guys that can actually actually pull it off, and those guys I respect. The other people that use technique, I don't respect that much because uh, they're using too much uh, technology to create what they create what they're creating. Yes. Same yeah. with guitar players. There are just a few out there that are really good, but most of them, they create their music within their um, um, within their computer or sequence or any DAW you uh, you want to talk about. Yes. They have Cubase, they have ProLogic, they have all these things, and they think that they're the best producer in the world. And, and they copy and they quantize their riffs and they do everything to make it sound really, really, really tight. Uh, but most of the time, it does not sound real anymore. It just sounds computerized. Yes. yes. So after Sphere, you split up and you yeah. take a break. May I ask you why, what happened and um, for these... Uh, well, I, I, told, I told you I was very depressed with the fact that uh, Roadrunner did not give us any chances anymore because they were signing so many death metal bands after us um, that they kind of lost, um, they lost, um, you know, they lost, they lost us because we were trying to do something as well. And they're, you know, con contracting all these bands so they have to focus on every band. Yeah, and and yeah. not focus on pestilence anymore. I mean, the bands that they had, there was not enough. You know, they had DSI, they had obituary, obituary at that point. Yeah. They had pestilence, and they had a few others, and that was it. And then came all these other bands along, and then they put so much money into uh, into those bands. Then, then, then pestilence got a little bit forgotten, and that's where mm -hmm. my frustration started. That's when I made Spheres, and then, um, well, the yeah. rec uh, the record, you know didn't do well so i didn't have any i didn't have any contract anymore I, I lost my faith in 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 metal and in record companies so yes. I, just, I just quit I, I just had a regular job and uh, you know trying to to trying to survive like most of us of, of us guys are doing right now still yes but we are good that you are in a, that you are here it's an honor so yeah Actually, you began again in 2008, so Pestilence was formed again. Was this a rather spontaneous decision back then, or had it been your plan for a longer time? And how was it to come back together after all of this time? Well, you know, um, not a lot of people know this, but, you know, like, like I said, I don't listen to metal that much, but I try to, I try to keep up with what is happening, so I'm not a com complete idiot and fool like, like, oh, what's happening, and I don't know. Yes. So I, I do know which bands are, are hot and which bands are not, right? Okay. So, so after after this, um, at one point I was listening to to some some really brutal music and I was checking it out and the band was called Hate Eternal. Right? Yes. So so and I'm checking out the drummer because I always check out the drummers and and, and it was with Derek Roddy. And uh, which I respect very much. Back then, he was uh, just a beast, and I could see that his techniques are uh, still um, now at this point. Still, a lot of people in the scene are looking up to him because he was the guy that came with the bomb blast and that came with the blast beats, with the single foot blast beat, blast beat stuff like that. And um, that that kind of got me fired up. I'm like, wow, man! I I, I, I kind of got myself into the brutality again of. Uh, and the essence of, of what, what, what death metal is, you know, yes. the, 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 the pure brutality of it. Obviously, I don't want to sound like Hate Eternal, but their, their vision and their brutality, uh, you know, sparked a fire within me. So I, I kind of felt like, wow, uh, maybe there, it is time again for me to create music again. So that's what I did. That's amazing. Very and cool. after you return to the metal scene, you released your album. What could you say about this, like Resurrection, Macabre? What was the what was the experience of having Tony Choi as bass player? Well, I, I did know Tony Choi for uh, for Testimony of the Ancients, and then we kind of lost track, and um, and he he went his way with atheists and stuff like that. So when I asked him um, uh, if he was a, a, available to, to record um, a Resurrection and tour with me for this, 
um, he was very enthusiastic about it. You know, I, I played him the songs. He was like, wow, that, those are some crazy riffs, right? And um, um, that's he kind of liked the style because it was so pure. Because mm -hmm. back in the day when we started, you had other um, you had other um, um, mu musical, let's say, musical styles that are kind of um, not entwined, but but kind of a little have some similarity, like the good old punk music and hardcore music, like yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I, I, when I was younger, I'd rather go to uh, skinhead parties or hardcore parties because the people there were so much more um, into being real than uh, than having long hair and looking good and wearing the light, the nice metal shirt and being jealous of somebody that has a different metal shirt than you. Uh, oh, I want the shirt. Well, look, man, I don't care for any shirt. Uh, for me, that uh, that has that has no impact. For me, the impact is um, the feeling you get for the music, right? Yes. Yeah. And spontaneity behind it. And I found that when you go to a hardcore punk uh, party, the people were just really, really crazy. Yes. There was a lot of moshing going on, not like in the metal scene, because in the metal scene, mm, it's different, right? Yes. You know, it's more like okay, look what kind of shirt I'm wearing and shit like that. <laughs> like, oh, hardcore people. Yes. Uh, it's they are crazy. It's, they it's, don't it's, look at your face. What they? Yeah, they are yeah, crazy. I but know they, are, they are and, crazy, and, but they are real. <laughs> it's not like it's not like uh, you know metal hats are 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 less than 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 punk no, no, no. or hardcore people. No, it's it's just a different scene, and I kind of can relate to uh, the atmosphere there. So. Mm -hmm. So when when I recorded um, Resurrection Macabre, I, I wanted to be very very brutal, and uh, you know, since I was listening to Hate Eternal, um, I felt that that um, that Pestle sh uh, should, when they do the comeback, uh, that it should be a very brutal album. Uh, but it's still it's still my Mali style. It's not it's not like it's not completely different. It's still Pestilence, but with a different sauce, with a different. Sauce. Now we have carbonara. Now we don't have like the <laughs> the tomato sauce, right? Now we use carbonara, and yes. then for another album we use another sauce. Maybe just yeah. olive oil and and and, and onions. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, what was the sauce that you used for Hadian in 2018? Basically, could this album be considered a return to older years, or was it something entirely different again? For you. Um, well, I was thinking um, if I if I copy myself, it wouldn't be that bad, would it? No. <laughs> but, yourself is kind of cool because you know it's you have created a style and and you and and you want to recreate that style. Whereas I'm, in the past, I've never done this, but um, a lot of people because um, you ha you have to understand, you know, since the since internet and since Facebook. I get so many requests, friendship requests, and also messenger um, um, messengers from from people all over the world, and and they keep on asking about when are you doing Testimony of the Ancients Part Two? And I always have to say, well, I, I will never copy myself. Um, I only do it if I can use a different sauce, and if it if it tastes a little bit like Testimony, I'm fine with it. Yes. So that's when Hey Dion came about. Hey Dion is again a very pure album, and it has like more like a, a, a looking back to towards testimony, really. Yeah. You know, because um, I'm in the middle of recordings uh, for Exitium, and um, and this is again a whole different ball game. It, it is it is still death metal, but it's way uh, it has way more groove, and the guitars are. Uh, how can I say it? It's it's like it's really really cutting like a knife, you know. Okay. Yeah, because we're not like one of those bands that 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 want to tune down so low that that the guitar is lower than the bass guitar, for example. You know, yeah. we kind of we did that on uh, we did that on Obsideo when we were using a string guitar, um, mm. and and that's that was then, and this is now. Um, I'll probably never go back to a string. Uh, with pestilence, uh, because especially live, um, it's very hard to uh, reproduce what you did on the album because yes. of the 
because of the frequencies. Now we're tuned back to to standard E, and yes. uh, it's it's it feels better. We did that for Hey Dion already. You know, it's uh, Resurrection has E standard, so um, we kept this. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, we're always trying to to evolve, and I'm yes. always using different musicians, as you know. Yes. So, and this guy yeah. is all all Dutch. All the guys are from Holland. <laughs> that's <Right>. amazing. <laughs> so, since you guys are a, a colossum of death metal, but which band influenced your songwriting and composing? Um, I guess um, when I look back uh, at uh, Malayus and, um, and um, consuming, mm -hmm. I would have to say it was, um, it was death, possessed, uh, an infernal majesty, the most, pretty much. Um, and but after that, um, I, I realized that um, I was copying too much of the style of these bands, and these bands were there as well, uh, already having the style, right? So if you have to choose between a, 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 a very nice Ferrari or, or a very nice Lamborghini. It's pretty much the same horsepower, right? It yeah. just has with, it just has to do with the looks then, really. Yeah. Most of, most of it. So I didn't want to go for the looks. I, I want to go for the engine. So the engine is death metal, but the looks have to be different from the flavors that are out there. Yes, yeah. So sure. That's when I started realizing uh, I don't want to listen to to death or possess or all these bands because. I'm too much of a sponge. I take too much of their information and subconsciously I will I will reproduce what they are doing already. That means I'm not original. So yes. yeah. uh, starting with Testimony of the Ancients, um, we started to be more pestilence and more original. Mm -hmm. and, 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 that, that, and that expansion I really liked myself because now uh, when you put on a pestilence album, after one riff you already know this is pestilence, that's it, right? Yes. So it, that's my style, and um, I, I, I try to find the musicians to to complement my style, and it and it has been a great journey uh, so far. Uh, and now I have a, an old Dutch band, uh, which is kind of nice for me uh, at this point because we all live in Holland. Uh, back in the days, it's very difficult to 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 have relationships and musical relationships with people uh, outside your country. So. I'm happy with this now. Perfect. So um, I think you answered part of the next question, but this is basically a question for you personally. If you had to choose right now five musicians or bands or maybe albums or songs, specific songs that inspired you, which would they be? Um, well, um, I, I think I can do three or four. Okay. okay, it's fine. That's perfect. <laughs> um, I have uh, a lot of respect and um, and I got a lot of in inspiration out of this band, um, Ripping Corpse, mm -hmm. which I, I don't know if you guys know Ripping Corpse. I don't. You don't? <laughs> okay. Well, uh, look it up. Okay. Uh, look it up, Ripping Corpse. Okay. And uh, they're dead now, but they, they they were such an amazing band. They had more, um, you know, the 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 hardcore uh, hardcore approach, and uh, the singer was bald, right? So and back then that was not metal at all. So that that kind of got me really into Ribbon Corpse. Mm -hmm. um, the other guy, of course, uh, is Chuck Schuldiner. Um, you know the you know the guy the guy was uh, was was a genius and. Um, I'm sorry that we that our relationship got worse um, at a later stadium, um, and um, that we never get a chance to um, you know to resolve our, our problems. Um, but that was that was a, a big influence back in the days, you know, from Malayas to to consuming. Uh, so him and um, I've always um, admired Jeff Becerra from Possessed. Mm. Um, Another great man and great artist that he still uh, keep he, on going a lot of people don't know that he wrote a lot of riffs uh being a bass player so oh, and those okay. are amazing um i he i used to, I used to try to steal and copy that stuff uh copy the hell out of it because you know that guy was just 
just amazing. And then there's just a few a few other bands that are a little bit more obscure, but most of those bands and artists are more um, jazz related. Mm. Yeah. So uh, so that probably doesn't ring a bell to you like Steve Coleman, um, like Alan Holdsworth, for example, like Scott Henderson, people like that, that really uh, opened up my um, my eyes um, regarding uh, my, my solo playing and the way I think about music now. Yeah. Yes. So, as always, you anticipated us. So, if you are, for example, an organizer and you want to organize a festival, okay, so you have to choose Elena from leaving or not leaving band, which will be the bill if you have to decide to do it? Well, well, of course, I have my, fa I have my favorites and uh, because, of, um, uh, because of Antifa and stuff like that, our tour with Possess got canceled. So uh, definitely Possess uh, would be on the, top, on the top of the bill. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and next, next to the, 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 you know, next to the bands that I, I, that I grew up with, uh, next to Cannibal Corpse, of course, because I remember those guys from from way way back when when Pestilence was higher on the bill than 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 they were, because at one point we were more famous than they were. So can imagine what happened yes. in 20 yeah. years, you know? Yeah. Um, and and then again, I would I would have loved to see um, Deicide in the old lineup. Yeah, they changed. Yes. Yeah. I think that that you know. You know that that album Deicide um, was that was their brutalist album. You know I I love Legion, but for me it was Deicide. And of course, and of course, um, um, most of the bands that I would want on there are the bands that are not uh, not so well known from from way way back. Like I said, like Ripping Corpse and and bands like that that that, that don't exist anymore. So yeah, definitely no Slayer. <laughs> None of those bands. I mean, they, they 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 have gotten so much money already, and they're you know they're they they're play it too much. They they yes. they already did the history. Yeah, definitely. Although okay. I would love to see Jeff Hanneman again playing. You know, a lot yeah. of these people. A lot of these people are, are gone, and uh, sometimes it has to do with their lifestyle. So like let like me let me for example. Yeah. And, and and sometimes you know but then again um let me let me what died because of you know probably his 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 body failed on him right um and uh, and people people like it's, it's kind of weird um that people respect that you know and then when when and, and then for example when a drug addict or an alcoholic that we no, we don't know dies in the streets with no they don't care. nothing they don't care Yes. Yes. Because he was Lemmy. We see that. We see that all the time. Yes. It's like yeah. this legendary person who, when he when he disappears, he becomes even more famous, even if it's for some stupid yeah. reason. You know. It's right. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's why. That's why when when somebody dies and I see the glorification on Facebook, uh, I'm never I'm never one of those people that 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 do that. You know that that, yeah. that horrify that person. I, I always remember people that I see when I go, for example, on tour in South America that are so poor, they don't know how they, right? So I but think they have people, amazing musicians there. Yes, and, and they're and they're not musicians. They 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 save up, um, they save up for three, four months, sometimes five months to go to see a show. Yes, that, yeah. You know, we should respect those people. Definitely. But Absolutely. we only hear about the people that fucking drug themselves to death, drank themselves to death, but just because they're a musician, oh, you're so holy, you know? Look yes, at me. They, they, it's like that sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It's right. all that. It could be yeah. just metal, rock, whatever, pure, in a healthy way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny, you know, but the funny thing is, is that, you know, I'm 52. Um, I work out, I do bodybuilding every day. Right, mm -hmm. I go to the gym. Uh, I eat he uh, very healthy. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. Anything. And on stage, I drink milk. And, and okay. Right? And, and people and, and I, I drink milk because it makes it makes fat milk because it 
it helps my throat to perform. Yes, yes. And I get these messages from people saying that I'm not death metal because I don't drink, drink beer on stage. That <laughs> is it's like cry. here everywhere, even with with the, when you hang out with your metal friend or whatever, and if you don't drink beer, they say, why are not drinking? Because they don't drink, there is a reason, yeah. if I don't like alcohol. Yeah. Right. That's just what you said, that it's more an image now, right, than yeah. a feeling. Well, and the, and, the, and the thing is, is that, you know, a lot of these guys uh, that are in metal bands, they, they still, and they're, they're in their 40s, right? And they still party really hard because they want to escape. They want to escape what, what's at home as well. They just want to go on tour and everything is a big party. But I think when you do a show and people pay good money to see you, you have to be, you have to be just, your mind has to be, has to be right there. You right. Have to, yeah. Right. You can't be half drunk on stage because that's that's disrespectful to the to the people. Absolutely, it's, it's the same way around. Absolutely. If the whole crowd is drunk, and it doesn't matter what solo I play. I'm kind of, yes. you know. Yeah. Yeah. I totally yeah. get it. Totally get it. Okay. Uh, next question. Um, I know at the moment we are definitely. Uh, in some tough boundaries for touring, you know, and playing actually. So, are there any concrete future plans for Pestilence at the moment? Well, um, I, I don't think um, my my booker uh, can can give me uh, insurance that I'll be playing shows next year. I know that I'm doing a show uh, at the end of uh, this month. Um, and, and only because of the fact that in, in that country, um, they don't care that much about coronavirus. <laughs> yes. Okay. Right? Um, but, but since most of the governments uh, are following the, um, uh, um, how do you call it, are following the standards of um, WHO, uh, which are a bunch of fucking criminals, Mm -hmm. um, so you can't trust these people, but yet the governments they they take over their rules and they use imply implement their rules uh, on on the society, right? And 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 we are especially the musicians now um, we're half out of lockdown, but we can, sometimes you can't even travel yes. because and look we don't us, look they at they me. can try to to. I mean, in a small island. Some, I can go anywhere. I'm blocked here. Yes. So. So do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's like yes. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen next year, because what 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 they're trying to do is that they they they're trying to sell us. Because I think uh, coronavirus is bullshit, right? I don't think. I think it's a big hoax. Yes. I, I I haven't met anyone that has corona. And if you are tested and and you're tested positive and you feel you feel nothing, what is that? <laughs> what is that then? Okay. Yeah. Some people have Who knows? tested. They, they say, "Okay, I'm tested positive." We don't even know what test it is. Okay, yeah. so I have no yeah, proof that right. is, that is yeah, we know too. We know too little. It's yeah. Right. So and the thing is, is that uh, the that I think that the uh, the media. You know the media is um, is being used to promote uh, these rules, you know, to the world um, in in order to you know to 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 crash the 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 people that are trying to make you know trying to make money with their businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because how long can we can we survive? I mean, I haven't been able to play shows for over half a year now. Yes. And I haven't had any money. Yeah. Nothing. I yeah. make my I make my my money through through shows. That's my only income. Yes. And and our government in Holland, they don't care. Okay. Right here in Italy. <laughs> right. They yeah. don't care. About, they don't care about culture, and they don't care about what what culture does. If yes. you take away music from the people, a lot of people commit suicide. A lot of people get crazy because absolutely. When you're, when you are on lockdown, um, you 
you make this hormone, this stress hormone called cortisone, right? This stress yeah. hormone uh, will make you feel really bad. You don't get your vitamin D from, from the sun when you are in lockdown. It's only stress and it, it only gets worse. Uh, worse. People can't perform. People can't uh, go and do their jobs. Yes. And yeah. you, know, you can go outside and you have to wear a mask. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, everything. The thing I know about a mask is that you can't breathe through it. You hyperventilate because you breathe in your own air. Yes. It's called, uh, it's called cold monoxide, right? And you breathe your own air and you start to hyperventilate and it's really, really bad for your for your oxygen in your blood. And also for your anxiety because it can cause you panic yeah. attack. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I know. And you notice it every day. People get more and more upset, you know, more easily, and they get anxious and more aggressive, you know. And psychiatrists yeah. and uh, therapists ma are making a lot of money about that. You know, and then, yeah. they, then they're trying to stretch it until that 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 they have the uh, vaccine, so you can get vaccinated, right? The, the vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, normally, when there is a virus, which the, the use of the word virus, I have to really question because a virus is not something that is living. It only works in your body. So outside of the body, a virus cannot yeah. exist, right? So and this is common sense. So why do you, do you have to wash your hands? Why do you have to wear a mask if in the outer air, a virus cannot exist? Mm -hmm. So they're selling us a lot of bullshit. And, and a lot of people, they, they buy it and they, they, like sheep, they follow what's on TV. And I think that we should question this stuff more because now it, it, it also messes with my life because yes. I can't, I can't yes. make, uh, I can't make money, yeah. you know, because I yeah. have to pay the book as well. Right. Yes. So I start reading, I start reading a lot about, about coronavirus and about viruses. And then and some people on, on, on the internet. They, they tell they say that I'm talking bullshit because how can I say coronavirus does not exist because you see a lot of people dying in the street right but mm. I, I tell you my friend uh, I wish I will not um, name his name in Miami he went to the hospital there and there was nobody on IC mm. nobody on IC right. okay so, so, yeah, they made a lot of mistake here too. They say that in Sicily we had like a hundred people in hospital, and then two months later, after lockdown, there were just like one hundred and twenty. So, <laughs> just right. a mess and, up. And one hundred and twenty people probably just had the flu, right? Like it influenza. They didn't exist. It was just like fake temp, fake test. Made yes. Like, so. We are at the end well, right now. That's, that's kind of a, we kind of strain away a little bit from your question. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, so I, I don't know when the governments will um, open up the borders again so we can do a tour because for next year uh, it would have been uh, Testimony's 30th anniversary and mm -hmm. we would do a, a testimony tour yeah. throughout whole Europe. And now I don't know what's happening. Yes. Yeah, we hope for the best for you. We wish the yes. best, of course. Fingers crossed all because the time. Because we should be on tour with uh, some singer too. So we just finger crossed that also for us. Yes. So we definitely. are, yeah, yeah. Do you have a message for your fans and for our followers for ending? Okay, well, <clears throat> I guess the, 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 the thing that I would give them is has has not not is has no relationship with metal music or anything it has to do with the fact that we are all human beings and it starts with the family so i would love to see people appreciate their family uh, appreciate your husband ex, ex, uh, you know appreciate your your wife your children and try to be as healthy as possible for your family and if we all yeah. do this and have more respect for each other um the, we could we could probably make the world a better place and especially now in corona time where what you said is true there is so much more frustration and hate yeah. and uh the tolerance is is gone you know it's gone yes gone yeah. and uh, the anxiety takes over so it's it's time to reflect on yourself and sometimes just stop watching TV 
and just go outside with your mind. Share away. Yes. Okay, so thanks, thanks Patrick for being with us, and it has an honor of like a pillar of of metal as you, because it's just we are talking about. I mean, you. I mean, it's like um, having uh, Ronnie James D. I don't know for who likes heavy metal. So it really <laughs> was a pleasure, and uh, I hope to see you really soon in some live since we are all in Europe, and it could be easier for us. And maybe one day, who knows, have a, a real interview with just like laughing and watching us and say, do you remember back then when we had remember, yeah. <laughs> that Corona don't interview? Forget, don't forget, um, uh, I have an Italian promoter uh, and uh, in, the, in, the making, uh, in the making is when everything is back to normal, uh, a, a show on uh, Sicily as well. So we're working on this as well. Uh, so you're, you're, um, if you're working on Sicily, speak to me. This is the first thing that I can say to you because here the metal scene mm, is not so much good. So much good. Well, I, I think um, uh, we already did a show on Sardinia and it was fully packed. I mean, no, y yes, here you have a lot of fans. You can believe me. All of my friends follow you, but the fact is that there are no. You know that they are on um, different organization everyone invited from the others so if you ask them to join and do huge things together since we are uh, and big and huge island they don't want to do it they leave you alone so that's why i just take my own path and say okay that's fine you just well, do your role and i will do mine i will keep you in mind and i'll have my italian promoter um you yes. know yes it will be if we can work something out here yeah. people we go crazy I, I can assure you that because here oh, yeah. all, you can find all that metal band here all you play this music in sicily oh and and uh, and one thing um I, I am taller than ronnie james dio maybe maybe that is something <laughs> <I'm a little laughs> for sure <laughs> of course okay so thank you and bye thank I you. stay thank safe you so and see much. you soon thank you have, for having me and uh, take good care of yourself you drink. Always, always. Drink I'm a not robot. Always. Okay, cool. Perfect. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Take a ride on the wild side.